Hey there, it's Mitzi. Welcome to my channel. Today, I just wanted to hop on here and just talk to you a little bit and talk to you about some of the books I've been reading, uh, some books that I have acquired this week, as well as just some reminders and things. And so we're just going to have a little chat. So first, I want to talk about some books I received. The first book was some book mail that was a complete surprise, a new book from Debbie, one of my subscribers. So thank you to Debbie for sending me a little surprise. And it goes so perfectly with the very vintage Christmas uh, readathon that I am hosting during the month of December. The book is The Wish Book Christmas by Lynn Austin. And one of the prompts on the very vintage little game board is a vintage cover. So a traditional Christmas and that is a vintage cover or a vintage book. So this definitely would work because look at that gorgeous vintage cover. And so I do love Lynn Austin. I've read several of hers. She is a Christian fiction writer. And on the back, this says this takes place in 1951, and it's about two moms and their children, and their children receive the Sears Wish Book, the Sears Catalog Wish Book. And that made me happy because, y'all, I just talked about that probably a couple of months ago. We were in Augusta. There once was a Sears department store there in uh, a, a really big one. And I was mentioning to my husband how I loved it when we would get the catalog and Mama would go over there. Back in the day, you know, you didn't have internet, so you would order by mail or you would call them and order from the catalog. And then we would go over there and pick it up from that Sears building. In the back of the building, they had, it was almost like a locker room. And you would go in and you would uh, give them your order number. And they would go to the back and they had these bins like little lockers. And they would have your package there and you would pick it up. So you could shop there at the front where the wonderful candy was all displayed. But you could go to the back if you had ordered something and pick that up. And so every year, if you are my age, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Every year they came out with their Sears catalog wish book. And oh my goodness, we went through that thing and just circled all the toys we, we wanted and starred them and put little hearts. And it was underlined so that, uh, you know, mama would see that's the one I want Santa Claus to bring me or whatever. And so I just remember loving the wish book. And we would look through that wish book of all those wonderful toys uh, over and over until it was falling apart. So anybody else out there remember the Sears catalog wish book? It was fantastic. So anyway, this is about the kids in the story. They have the 1951's Sears catalog wish book and all the things they want for Christmas. And that's what this is going to be about. On the back it says, you know, it's, it's how to teach your children about the true meaning of Christmas. And so this is fiction, but I just thought that that was a, a great little nod to my memories as a child and the, the famous Sears catalog wish book. And this fits very vintage Christmas. So this would be a great one for that. So thank you to Debbie for sending me this one. This will be great to add to my very vintage collection. And so if you don't know anything about the very vintage Christmas readathon, I forgot in the uh, announcement video to actually link the board. So I'm going to link it in this video and I'll try to link it up until in every video I post so that you can print that out. It's just a board of all the prompts and things and a little reminder. And it's just a little cutesy graphic to go with the Very Vintage Readathon. So for the Very Vintage Readathon, I also received my copy of Miracle on 34th Street by Valentine Davies. And this is a great cover too. Look at that beautiful cover. But this is our group read for the Very Vintage Christmas Readathon. So if you want to join us, just let me know in the comments. Email me. My email is always in the description box and I can put you in the Voxer group and you can read along with us as we read this. Or you can just read along and at the end of December, I'm going to talk about this book. But I'd love for you to join us in the Voxer group. Now, I didn't realize, I knew it was short, but I didn't realize it was this short. This little book is only 120 something pages. I think like 125 pages or something. So it's super quick to read and this will not take uh, you long. So if you haven't read The Miracle on 34th Street, 
Miracle on 34th Street. If you haven't read that one, I do encourage you to read along with us. Now, I had, a, in my announcement video, I had said, well, I will divide it up and we'll talk about that in the group. However, it's so short, we will probably finish this up within the first couple of weeks. So, you know, this will be an easy one. If you're busy during the Christmas holidays, this is one you can squeeze in. We will be talking about it all during December, but I am going to create a Voxer group. Several of you have already told me you want to be in the group, and so I've been keeping a list of those. And uh, sometime this week, I'll probably go ahead and open that up so that you know that you are in the group and so that uh, we can make sure everybody's in there before December 1st. But we will start this December 1st and then you can read it probably in a day, really. But you can read this as uh, fast or slow as you want to and you have the whole month of December to do that. But we'll be talking about it in that Voxer group. So again, if you'd like to join our group read on Voxer, just let me know. And uh, I, again, my email is always in the description box and that's how I kind of keep in touch with you for those kinds of things. So that is a book that uh, came in. I apologize when I was posting my announcement video. This had not come in yet, so I didn't even know how long it was, but it's super short. So that'll be great because I actually like short books during Christmas because I like to read a lot of just Christmassy things. And the short ones just lend themselves well for all of the things going on during Christmas. And then I also went to a little thrift store with my husband, and I could not believe it. They had a Gladys Tabor book. I was so excited about this. Gladys Tabor is one that I have not read yet, but this one is Steel Cove Journal, and it's in great shape, and it still has a, a great dust jacket on it, and I couldn't believe that my thrift store had it, because these are hard to come by. You can't find them. So if you ever see a Gladys Tabor Pick that thing up and start reading it because apparently these are uh, great memoirs. So I was excited for that. And then they also had a little Frances Hodgson Burnett book called Rackety Packety House. And isn't that the cutest little book? These books, y'all, were not expensive at all. It was at one of my little uh, thrift stores that I go to, but I was excited about this one because it just gives me, doesn't it look like a Beatrix Potter kind of book? I mean, the size of it and everything, maybe a little bit bigger than those, but there's little pictures in here about the size of, you know, the Beatrix Potter picture illustrations and things. So it just reminded me of the of Beatrix Potter. But anyway, this one's by Frances Hodgson Burnett, and I'm trying to collect all of her books. So I was excited for that too. So those are just a few books that I received this week. Thank you, Debbie, for sending me that Christmas book for the Very Vintage Christmas Readathon. And again, I hope that you will join uh, me. I'll leave a link to the announcement video below in case you missed that. Okay, so let's talk about some of the books I've been reading. The first one, one I want to talk about is The Pale Horse by Agatha Christie. Uh, if you follow my channel, you know that I love Agatha Christie. <laughs> I just love her books. And I have just been trying to read all of her books. She's one of my read to zero authors. I want to read everything by Agatha Christie, even the ones that she wrote under a pen name. So I'm just interested in everything she's done. Well, this was one of the standalones I had not read. And then Janet mentioned to me that she would Buddy read this. Janet is one of my subscribers. I talk about her a lot because she, recently she sent me some Nancy Drew books and she was in my Nancy Drew group read that we read through the first 10 Nancy Drews and she was just such an asset for that group because she knows everything about <laughs> Nancy Drew. But anyway, she had offered to read this with me and we had a great time reading this. This has been a couple of weeks ago and I just have failed to mention it, but this was really a great one. This one is up there in probably in my top 10. I loved this one. Now, I will say it's a little darker uh, than, well, a lot darker than a lot of her books. You know, most of her books, like the Miss Marples, they just feel more cozy. This is not that at all. So this one is about, it starts with Father Gorman. This priest is asked to come see this woman who is dying. She's She asked for a priest on her deathbed. So Father Gorman goes to see this woman and she confesses these things to him. And she whispers in his ear this list of names. So he writes the names down and he puts it, he slips it into his shoe. 
and reassures her that he will handle it. He'll take care of it. So you know right there, something's going to go on with who are these names, you know, who are these people on this list, what does she know, what has she done, who's involved, you know. And so then on the way home, after he leaves there, he is murdered. In this particular one, it is dark because there's a lot of uh, good versus evil. Uh, there's witches. There's a seance that is super creepy. And you're trying to figure out what's going on because there's this question, are these witches killing people? Kind of like voodoo sort of thing. So it is a lot different than a lot of her others. However, I really found it to be a page turner. I did feel uncomfortable with the seance because there was a chicken involved and it was really dark. However, I'm always interested in a good versus evil. You know, you know, according to my faith, uh, of course I'm interested in that. But how people react to that, how they respond to uh, those type of things. And as long as the good is good and the evil is evil, I'm... I'm good with reading those kinds of books. So, but I did want to say it is darker. So if you don't like, you know, seance and it creeps you out and, you know, it scares you, then I don't suggest <laughs> reading this one. But I, I mean, it wasn't so scary because I don't read a lot of, you know, horror or anything. But it did make me feel uncomfortable. The seance was really weird. <laughs> it was just weird. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that to you. But I really enjoyed it. I found it to be a page turner. And just her theme of good and evil in this particular one was super interesting and in how she handled that. And then Janet, of course, had already read it and she read it again with me. I think she's read it several times. Uh, but it, it added a lot for me too because then I could hear her take on it and how she'd experienced it this time around as opposed to before and how she picked on other, up other things in this one as well. If you can take the darker Agatha Christie's, I enjoyed that one. And then for Nonfiction November, I have four books that I want to read for Nonfiction November, and I have finished two, and I'm so proud of myself because a lot of times during Nonfiction November, I usually choose about four books because there's usually four prompts, and I don't get, a, get to all of them, and so this time I'm on track to read all four, so I'm happy about that. The first one now was super short, but it was a good way to kind of get started and get this one done, and then I felt like, okay, I'm going to be able to do this. You know what I mean? So this one is by Peter Aykroyd, and it's called Poe, A Life Cut Short. And again, it is a slim volume, but wow. I gave this five stars. I thought it was fantastic. It is, again, a little slim volume because we don't know that much about him. Peter Aykroyd just studied all the diaries, uh, journals, letters, anything he could find on Edgar Allan Poe, but again, we just don't know that much about him. We do know that his parents were professional actors. The mom was really successful until she became so sick. She ended up dying of tuberculosis, and he was only a few years old when she died, and then the dad left them, and I think he had a brother and a sister. They were adopted, I think, by family members, but he was adopted by a successful couple, you know, had was able to provide him with a good education. The problem was he didn't really have a good relationship with the father who adopted him, but he always was just, just as his writing is. You know, his writing is super dark and depressing and a little scary. Well, he seemed to be that kind of person. You really do feel a lot of his presence in his writing. And he just had a dark life. And it, what was so bad was, even though he had all these struggles, he couldn't ever overcome them. He ended up becoming an alcoholic. And I'm not going to tell you everything, but it was just negative. He was a very negative person. He never felt like he was part of anything. I think he was a genius. I really do think he was a genius. When you read his work, there was a genius there, but I think he was misunderstood. And on top of that, he just didn't have a good outlook. He was not a po positive person at all. I think he kind of had a chip on his shoulder from what I read here. I don't want to uh, say for sure because, of course, we don't know that much about him, but based on uh, just observations from letters and diaries where he is mentioned by, uh, you know, people that knew him well. It just seems that he had a huge chip on his shoulder. Uh, but I think that he just was an awkward person. 
So it was sad, but it was fascinating. This was really a page turner, and I gobbled this one up, and I found it to be super interesting. I already knew a lot about Edgar Allan Poe because I've read him since I was in middle school, and I went to um, the museum in Virginia, so I was able to learn a little bit about him from that, but I'd never really read a an official biography on him, and even though this one's a short one, it's a great one to start with if you haven't read anything about the life of Edgar Allan Poe, so this would be a good one if you just want to know a little bit more about him. I highly recommend this one. I also read for the More Montgomery Challenge, I decided to read a biography, House of Dreams, The Life of L.M. Montgomery, and we are in the middle of the Mormon Montgomery Challenge right now. So pick up an Anne of Green Gables or Emily of New Moon or one of her short story collections and you can join us. Right now we are reading A Tangled Web and that's going great. But I thought for Nonfiction November I would include this biography that I've had on my shelf for a couple of years now, maybe longer than that. This is I thought that this was a middle grade version of a biography for Lucy Maud Montgomery. But I don't know, after I finished it, there were some things, some topics and things that I just didn't think a middle schooler would really be interested in the way that it was handled. Maybe, you let me know if you've read this one. It is written very easy reader sort of way. So it does read like how a middle schooler biography is written, but the topics to me, some of the topics, I don't know. I just didn't think a middle grade kid would want to to read that or be interested in it. Anyway, I did enjoy learning more about Lucy Maud Montgomery, uh, but this was sad too. She had a really sad life as well. There's some questionable things at the end that I have still have questions about, but I don't want to say anything if you don't know how her life ended. I'll just say that. So, But I do have questions about that. So anyway, this one was a, it was a good one. I, maybe three stars for this. I, I just didn't I don't know. I had higher hopes for a middle grade biography of Lucy Maud Montgomery. I do have another biography of Lucy Maud Montgomery that is supposed to be, it's an older one. This one came out not too long ago. It's an older one though and it's an adult uh, biography so I do plan on reading that one. But I did read this for Nonfiction November as well as more Mac the More Montgomery Challenge so I'm excited that I got that one read too. So two books for Nonfiction November plus a biography that I have wanted to read for quite some time on Lucy Maud Montgomery. I also picked up this from my library, and this is really nonfiction as well. What is the story of Anne of Green Gables? There are a lot of these little books, and I find these to be great intros to different subjects. And this one is about just why Anne of Green Gables is such a popular, famous book and series. And in it, though... I don't know what I expected. It, it really goes through and tells you a little bit about Lucy Maud Montgomery, how she ended up writing the Anne of Green Gables series and things like that. But in between, it kind of tells the story of Anne of Green Gables. And I don't know, I wasn't, I don't want them to tell me the story of Anne of Green Gables. I want them to give me details about, you know, why it's popular how it's celebrated, because there were some great facts about that in here, but I felt like there was too much of the fiction story in here. I don't know. Maybe I just expected something different. So, uh, it was an okay one. It did have some facts in it I didn't know about the Anne of Green Gables, you know, how famous it is, and uh, they have this celebration every year and different things like that. So I did enjoy the book for that reason. And then I read Anne Dares. I've been reading through these for the More Montgomery Challenge each year. These are just little picture books and each one features a different chapter from the Anne of Green Gables book. So if you love Anne of Green Gables, you will love these too. They just have cute little interesting illustrations that go with each chapter. In this one, this is the one where uh, she takes a dare. And I'm not going to tell you if you haven't read it, but it's the chapter where she takes the dare at the party. 
And so I'll just leave it at that. And, and I enjoy these. And so I do plan on picking up more of these. See if these are in your library because I think all of these, every chapter of Anne of Green Gables, I think has one of these little books. And I think they're all at my local library. So check your library to see if your library has those or any other Anne of Green Gables uh, related picture books as well. So those are the books I've been reading lately. What have you been reading? Let me know that in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.